Here's everything you need to know to get started with Emulate for DaVinci Resolve. First and foremost, you need the studio version of DaVinci Resolve. The free version is not compatible with Emulate. Whether you're on macOS, Windows or Linux, the installation process is the same for all systems and requires only two steps. After purchasing Emulate, you will receive this zip file. If your machine didn't already unzip this during download, you can now unzip this. Inside the Emulate folder, you will find three folders called Emulate Camera LUTs, we get to that in a bit, Install in LUTs folder and Install in Power Grades. Now open DaVinci Resolve and go into any random project. Here, go into the color page and into your LUTs folder and right click and select Reveal in Finder. If you're on Windows, it says something like Open File Location. Once you click this, DaVinci Resolve will open its LUT folder. Next, we will take a look inside the Install in LUTs folder and here we find this Emulate folder. That's it, we need to drag and drop this folder into the LUTs folder. Next, go back into DaVinci Resolve once again and go to your Gallery tab. Here, right click on one of these still albums on the side and select Add Power Grade Album. It is very important that you select Add Power Grade Album and not Add Still Album. So I click Add Power Grade Album and DaVinci Resolve gives me this new Power Grade Album. Now I double click this and call this Emulate. With this Power Grade Album set up, I go back to the Emulate folder and select all of the files inside Install in Power Grade. Here you can see all of the different DRX files and we now need to drag and drop them into the gallery here. To finish the installation process, just relaunch DaVinci Resolve. Once DaVinci Resolve is open again, you need to press Shift 9 to toggle your project settings. Here under Color Management, select the color science DaVinci YRGB. Not DaVinci YRGB Color Managed, not anything else DaVinci YRGB. Next, the timeline color space needs to be DaVinci White Gamut, DaVinci Intermediate, and the output color space should be set to whatever Rec. 709 standard you need for the project. But if you're like me, on a Mac running the newest version of DaVinci Resolve, you should select Rec. 709 Scene. Once all of this is set up, click down here on Save. To finally start grading with Emulate, drag and drop the clip power grade into your node panel here. Now I get rid of the gallery and the first thing we need to do is select our input color space and our input gamma. In my case, this footage has been shot with a black magic camera, so I need to select black magic design, white gamma generation 4 and 5 and also black magic design film generation 5. The output color space is set automatically to DaVinci White Gamut, DaVinci Intermediate. It needs to stay this way, don't change this. Okay, if the footage in your timeline is from the same exact camera, you can now just select this clip, press Command C, select all of the other clips and press Command V to paste this node tree. If you're working with mixed footage, you of course need to set the input color space accordingly for each clip individually. Okay, all of this is good and well, but what about cameras that are not natively supported by DaVinci Resolve? For example, any DJI cameras shooting D-Log-M. Don't worry, we got you covered. Instead of using this IDT node here with a color space transformation, you can go into your LUTs folder, inside Emulate, and here you can find Emulate IDTs. If we go into this folder, you can find IDTs for DJI, Fujifilm, GoPro, Olympus, Phantom, Sony and Zcam. Just go into one of these folders and instead of the color space transformation here on this node, just apply this input device transformation LUT and you're good to go. Other than setting up the color space transformation, you shouldn't do any other adjustments at this stage. Once all of your clips are set up, it's time to get the look working. We do this at the timeline level node tree. To go there, you can either click on this clip here and select Timeline or in the middle here, press the rightmost dot. If you're coming from Premiere Pro or Final Cut Pro, the Timeline Level Node tree essentially behaves like an adjustment layer affecting all of the clips in your timeline. Now I go back into my gallery section here and drag and drop the look power grade into the node panel here. And yes, now we are cooking. Emulate comes with the Emulate Checker. This node is disabled by default and if you enable it, you can see that funky stuff happens with your image. The checker has two modes, the skin tone checker and the neutral checker. The neutral checker lights up in cyan when any color is neutral. So if we go back to the clip level here into the basic DCTL and just change the white balance temperature, you can see how 
cyan pixels creep up until this color is indeed white. If we now disable the check DCTL, you can see that this color here is indeed perfectly white. We can take a look at another mode of the checker, which is the skin tone checker. And you can see there are some funky things happening here. But it is very, very easy. The only thing you need to know is that yellow means everything is nice, everything is at or around the skin tone indicator line. Green means, oh, everything deviates a bit more towards yellow. And purple or magenta rather means that everything deviates more towards red. So your skin tones shouldn't be too red, they shouldn't be too yellow, they should just be right. So now let's go back to our clip level node tree here and inside the basic DCTL, let's play around with the white balance until most of our skin tones are in fact yellow. And that's it, this shot is now balanced. Moving to the left, you can see the emulate developer. Here, let's zoom out a bit. Here you can change the look intensity, meaning how much of a given look you would like to have applied. The film compression, which gives you more matte highlights and a different contrast response. Brightness, white point, black point, the saturation of your image, and by default, a vignette. However, I would recommend starting at the bottom here, where you can toggle the different looks that come with Emulate. For example, let's choose something like the 2383 look. By the way, this checkbox here allows you to toggle whether or not you expose to the right. Play around with all of these settings, you really can't break anything here. Another node to the left, you can find our density DCTL, which allows you to increase the, well, density of your colors. Density just means the more saturated a color becomes, the deeper or the darker it gets. This gives you a very natural and filming saturation response. Another node to the left is our balance DCTL, which allows you to balance your image very, very precisely in the highlights, the midtones and the shadows. It's basically a white balance tool, but split into these three regions. Another node to the left is our basic DCTL, which you already saw at the clip level. This allows you to adjust exposure, white balance temperature and tint, and contrast, highlights, midtones and shadows. Chroma distorts your image and gives it a chromatic aberration look at the edges. If we zoom into the edges here, you can see that if I toggle Chroma off, Everything is rather sterile, and if I toggle chroma on, you can see this beautiful fringing here. Bloom is basically a promised filter without the need for a promised filter. So let's maybe move to this clip here and take a look at some highlights. If I disable the bloom, you can see that everything is very, very clean in the highlights and nothing spills or glows. If I enable bloom, you can see that everything gets this very nice glow. If you want to customize this, just double click to go into the compound node. And this looks like rocket science, but fear not, it is very, very easy. So first, you can choose how much pollution you want. So maybe you want extreme pollution or actually no pollution. I think I will stick with medium here. But more important than the pollution is the strength here. By default, it's set to 1 8th, but you can go bananas and choose a full stop of the promised effect. And here you can see that the highlights now bleed very, very far. I think I want to stick with 1 8th, so I just connect this node. And this is basically all you need to do. Just select the node that you want and connect it to the given output. Next up, we have halation. Again, if I turn off halation, you can see that everything is rather clean and sterile. And if I turn halation back on, we get this beautiful organic orange red glow around contrasting edges. Same thing here, double click to go into halation. And again, this looks like rocket science, but it really is easy. So maybe you want to go nuclear with your halation, then connect this node, or maybe you want the halation effect to be a bit more subtle. So just connect this node and you're good to go. In my case, I want to stick with the standard halation. Going back out to the timeline level node tree again by clicking once on the halation down here. And last but not least for the look, we have this grain compound node. And here, if we double click this, you can see we have again two stacks of nodes. One is for the film resolution. You can choose a very low film resolution, which gives you a very soft image, or if you want to preserve the full resolution of your image, just connect the full resolution node. I think I want to go with something in the middle here. Yeah, I think that looks good. And now to the right here, you can see the different grain presets. And each preset comes with a C and with an M at the end. 
So let's go to something neutral like this part of the sky here and connect one of those nodes. For example, I want to connect 16 mm C means we now get 16 mm grain with color and 16 mm M means we now get the same grain but without any color. In my case, I think I want to stick with the 35 mm grain in monochrome, which is the 35 mm M preset. Once we have configured our look to our liking, we can start color grading the individual clips. So I go back to the clip level node tree here, and there you can see some familiar DCTLs. For example, our basic DCTL is also a very handy tool for grading at the clip level because it allows you to adjust exposure photometrically and also the white balance, temperature and tint sliders are the best you will ever use. Trust me. But this node structure is just a suggestion. You can add nodes, remove nodes and do whatever you want at the clip level. Your limit is only your creativity. However, in most cases, if you dial in your look at the timeline level well, some basic adjustments using the basic DCTL will probably get you in the right ballpark without any detours. Now that you graded each individual clip in your project, you can take advantage of Emulate's biggest strength. Emulate's color science respects your exposure adjustments. That means you can now go back to the timeline level node tree and into the developer node, and here you can choose an entirely different look. For example, something like Anderson, and nevertheless, all of your exposure decisions remain intact. It doesn't matter which look you choose, whether it is something high contrast like the Fincher look or something very low contrast like Metropolis. Your exposure will not move, period. Speaking of exposure, Emulate can also be installed on your camera so you can achieve the perfect exposure in camera. This also means you can also see your final image already when shooting. So let's take a look at the Emulate Camera LUTs folder. If we go in here, you can see that every look comes in two versions, a neutral version and an ETTR version, which stands for exposed to the right, meaning the LUT will force you to overexpose your log footage, giving you the cleanest image possible. And for each look, we cover all of the cameras that we support. So if you can install LUTs on your camera or monitor, I would highly recommend doing so because this is a game changer in your workflow. Once you have the looks that you like installed on your camera, you can now only use one exposure technique called ETLG, which stands for exposed to look good. This means you don't need to fumble around with zebras or false color, just trust the back of your camera or your recorder for that matter. That's Emulate in a nutshell. If you have any further questions, please reach out to us via email at info at